So thus far, we have discussed carbocation stability. And we said that as we go from methyl to primary to secondary to tertiary carbocations, our stability of carbocations increases. But why is this true? Now thus far we have not answered this question sufficiently. We haven't answered why are more substituted carbocations more stable than the less substituted ones. Well to answer this question, let's examine the molecular orbitals of these carbocations and let's see if we can find some type of stabilizing effect in the more substituted carbocations. So let's take the extreme cases. Let's compare the molecular orbitals of our methyl carbocation and compare it to the tertiary carbocation. So let's begin by drawing the diagram for our tertiary carbocation. So that is shown here. Notice that the central carbon with a positive charge is sp2 hybridized and that means that this carbon is planar. It also contains an empty 2p orbital, an unfilled empty 2p orbital that has a full positive charge on the carbon. We also have three identical methyl groups. So let's examine this methyl group. We can also examine these two, but to save space, we're only going to look at this carbon. So notice this carbon shown here is sp3 hybridized. We have three sigma bonds connected to this carbon, and all of and each one of these sigma bonds is sp3 hybridized. So let's take this sp3 hybridized orbital for instance. Inside this sp3 hybridized orbital, we have a pair of electrons, the maximum number of electrons. And that means we have a fully filled atomic orbital or molecular orbital that is sp3 hybridized. Now whenever we have an empty 2p orbital or an empty orbital and a filled orbital next to one another, we have a stabilizing interaction. And that's exactly what we have between these two carbons. The empty 2p orbital found on this carbon can interact with the filled sp3 hybridized orbital on this carbon. And the same exact is true with this carbon and this carbon. The carbon H bond here is able to interact with the empty 2p orbital here. Now let's examine our methyl carbocation. In the methyl carbocation, we do not have that same interaction. Notice that we have the central carbon that is sp2 hybridized. We also have that full charge on this empty non-bonding 2p orbital, but we don't have those carbon H bonds that have the filled sp orbital, sp3 orbitals that are able to interact in the stabilizing manner. So once again, in the methyl carbocation, there are no filled orbitals that can interact in a stabilizing manner with the empty 2p orbital of the central carbon. Now, in the more substituted carbocation, in this example, in the methyl, in the tertiary carbocation, the filled sp3 hybridized molecular orbital of the carbon H bond shown here can interact with the empty 2p orbital causing a stabilizing interaction. So we have a homo-lumo interaction. So, the highest occupied molecular orbital is this more stable sp3 hybridized orbital that contains the two electrons and this higher in energy 2p orbital is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital and they interact to form a new molecular orbital that is more stabilized and lower in energy than the original. So in this molecule, this molecule, and this molecule, there's this interaction taking place. And this interaction is known as hyperconjugation. So as we go from left to right, we have more hyperconjugation taking place because we have more substitution. We have more alkyl groups bonding to our central carbon that has the positive charge, that has the empty 2p orbital. So the answer to this question is Hyperconjugation takes place as you add alkyl groups to the center carbon in the carbocation. 
Hyperconjugation is the interaction between a filled sp3 hybridized orbital of the carbon H bond and the empty 2p orbital of the carbon. So let's look at an example where hyperconjugation is important. Let's suppose we have this relatively asymmetrical alkene. In other words, this side does not match this side. To this carbon, we have two methyl groups attached. To this carbon, we have two H groups attached. So if we look at the hydrohalogenation reaction taking place, if we add HCl molecule to carbocations, can theoretically exist. In the first reaction, we have the H atom going onto this carbon, forming the following carbocation. In the second reaction, we have the H atom going on the other side, on this carbon, for, forming the following carbocation. So notice on this case, in this case we have a, um, a primary carbocation, in this case we have a tertiary carbocation. And as we saw before, in tertiary, we have more hyperconjugation taking place than in a primary or secondary. So that means this carbocation will be stabilized and lower in energy because of hyperconjugation. Now let's look at a common misconception that exists between hyperconjugation and double bonds. Now, hyperconjugation is not the same thing as pi bonds. Hyperconjugation is not the formation of a pi bond. Recall that a pi bond is created by the interaction of an empty 2p orbital and a filled 2p orbital, while hyperconjugation is created from a filled sp3 hybridized orbital and an empty 2p orbital. So pi bonds are not exactly the same thing as hyperconjugation. These are two processes, but in both cases, they're stabilizing. So hyperconjugation is a stabilizing process. Once again, as we go from our methyl all the way to our tertiary, we increase in the number of hyperconjugated bonds. In other words, because as we go this way, we add more methyl groups, we have more hyperconjugation taking place. In this molecule, there is hyperconjugation not only between these, this carbon H bond and the MT2P orbital, but also the carbon H bonds found on these two methyl molecules.